Oh, there I am. You can hear me now, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, that's mildly embarrassing. So basically what I was talking about, and I was just going through and talking about the slides that were listed. Um, I was talking about the different industries that game development you could get a career in and you know, who am I? I've, <laughs> I've been in the industry for 20 years and, uh, I've been an educator. I've been, I've developed video games. I am a researcher. Uh, I work with various colleges and I've uh, just recently moved to Tennessee. So I'll be hopefully working with the university of Tennessee in game development and helping their students grow. Um, I own my own game. I'm a, I'm a gamer for life and a mentor. Um, the game development industry is probably the slide I don't want to skip over that you guys couldn't hear me on. I do apologize that for that, you know, COVID problems. Am I right? <laughs> so, uh, the industry itself is still pretty much in its infancy. Um, it's about 60 years old. It uh, started in the 60s with NASA and has grown significantly since then. Um, the diversity level is, uh, for gaming, it's about 50-50 male and female. However, for um, the industry, for game development, people who work in the industry, uh, men are about 71% and women are 24%. And uh, the transgender is about 5%, which really hasn't changed much in the past five years. Um, with five years ago, men being 74% uh, and women were still only at 24%. Uh, I expect to see a little bit of a change in the next couple of years. I'm hoping for a bigger change in the next 10 to 20 years with more women and more diverse culture getting involved in game development. Um, a lot of the problems places have and a lot of the problems uh, people looking for jobs have is where to find talented employees and where do you look for jobs for employees. So I'll go over that in a slide further down. Um, a lot of companies, they're still having trouble trying to figure out how do you turn a profit. This is especially an, is an issue in independent gaming because most independent gamers really don't know a lot about the business of game development. Um, it's also kind of interesting that when you think about video games, you think of kids or kids in their like early 20s and those are the primary gamers when really the majority of gamers are actually in their mid uh, 30s and mid 40s. So it's kind of cool. The generation that grew up with Nintendo is the primary generation playing video games. So it's kind of an interesting little fact. Um, I'll move forward. Let's see. So the next two slides, we're just listing the different types of game development, like VR and VR, alternate reality, computer, uh, arcade, and you can see the list there, I don't need to tell you, but that's everything that you can make games for. Um, there's other various little consoles and things that pop up here and there, but <laughs> uh, these are the major ones. And then uh, the next slide is all the different industries. And, uh, when you think of video games, you think of entertainment. However, <laughs> there are lots of other industries that do use video game uh, video games as a uh, career. Um, so the entertainment industry is the most well known. Uh, it's typically how how people uh, identify the game development industry. Um, you've got your console games, your Xbox games. Um, your Windows, your Linux for some indie developers, um, very popular with the uh, iPhones and the Androids because everybody has one. Um, and this is typically where you're going to start your career, which I think is where I realized that I had um, not had my mic on. <laughs> so this is typically where you're going to start your career and uh, you'll end up most likely getting a job with either a larger indie company or a AAA company like uh, Ubisoft or uh, one of their developers. Uh, they're actually the publisher. Um, there's lots of studios all over the U.S. Um, if you want to look, you can find them on uh, GameDevMap.com, I believe. Um, let's see. So it's typically how most people identify, and it's 
you know, where everybody wants to make their video games, their dream game. Um, the next area is social media, which a lot of you, I'm sure, are aware of. You've got Twitch and YouTube. Um, there's a lot of things going on with Facebook live streaming now, and uh, I think Twitter might have some too. I don't know if they got involved with gaming or not. Um, typically, in this area, you're going to have a large fan base, a confidence with your game presence, being able to talk to uh, no one and everyone at the same time. <laughs> And uh, most of the time, you're going to be either reviewing games, doing playthroughs, or uh, making shows with game characters. And uh, I don't know if any of you remember Red vs. Blue, but that was one of my favorites. They used the Halo characters to create a show. And nowadays, there's a lot of Minecraft shows, which I'm only aware of because I have a bonus son who loves to watch Minecraft shows. <laughs> so... Uh, there's that. You can make your own shows, things like that. Um, medicine, and this is actually outside of entertainment. This is the largest industry that uses video game development. Um, a lot of it's for research. Um, some of it is for training surgeons how to use tools. A lot of you may remember the, may remember the Wii. Um, there was a team uh, that created a game called The Underground Game, and it they created a like a clip-on tool that resembled the stomach surgical tool for doctors in training <laughs> to learn how to use these sur surgical instruments in a fun way. So they played an entertainment game using the surgical tools as a remote, like a controller. And when they went to go and do the surgery, they, uh, they actually um, did very well and the muscle memory was there. So it's kind of neat. Um, they have lots of other kinds of games, like empathy games for patients and family members. So, like if, if uh, you have a family member that has chronic migraines and things like that, they can do a, a VR empathy game to kind of show somebody who doesn't get migraines what it could be like. Um, yeah, <laughs> and outside it is the larger. There's a lot of research being done in this industry, and it's very interesting. Um, Typically, if you're going to develop games for this industry, you're most likely not going to be in AAA. You'll be an independent developer contracted through a, a hospital or some kind of organization to do it. Or maybe you're just doing it because it's, you're passionate about it or somebody in your family has something that you feel video games could help them with. It's an interesting area. Um, the education field is my favorite field. Um, the STEAM or STEM education, depending on where you're, what your school district calls it, uh, you make these educational games. Uh, Leapfrog, I believe, is probably the biggest one. They've been around for several decades, making video games for kids up to about fourth grade. Um, they really they they have video games for kids that are in older games, but they're okay, <laughs> in my opinion. They're not that great. I, I think of there's needs to be a lot more research done in education or edutainment. Um, a lot of research has started in the last 10 years. Um, a couple years ago I was part of a research that used uh, eye tracking to see how children were learning and to try and find an interesting way to help kids learn computational thinking better, which is essentially STEM education. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so uh, another interesting thing about edutainment is uh, the, you can use the virtual reality and alternate reality. There's a couple of games, I know Niantic, the people who make um, Pokemon Go, they're working on an educational game for alternate reality. I'm not really sure too much more about it, but it does sound really cool. Uh, I would hope that... That is just a little stinker. Uh, I would hope that uh, there will be more. I know I would like to, in the future, do some research, and I'm going to talk, hopefully, about that later on in my couple years, something like that. I don't know. Um, but, you know, you could uh, interact with dinosaurs and learn about the dinosaurs. I mean, I love dinosaurs. I mean, <laughs> Jurassic Park. <laughs> All right. So uh, then there's government. Uh, there's a lot of different uses for game development and government. Um, most of it is 
going to be uh, like training uh, tools. So uh, you can use like uh, the flight system that uh, Microsoft just came out with. Uh, you, and you would train flight pilots using that, like in a, an area. You can actually go to the Smithsonian Museum in the Washington, D.C. area, and they have a simulation that you can get in like you're flying a spaceship. It's pretty cool, but that's, that's a video game. <laughs> um, NASA uses them for simulations, like I just said, um, the, and uh, a lot of cities are using games for traffic simulations to help better map or road, uh, you map their roads. Um, I know there's a lot of smart cities. Columbus, Ohio is a smart city. And they use it to map how their autonomous vehicles are going to drive through. So uh, you may not be aware of it if you live in Columbus, Ohio, but there are cars driving around <laughs> near the Kosai Center that are driverless vehicles. They're basically taxis. And um, there's a lot of government funded research in game development uh, some, some of it having to do with education, a lot of it having to do with, uh, diversity. Um, it is harder to get grants through government funding. I will say that, uh, most of it, most of the time is because most people, they want to be a for-profit studio, whereas the government gives money to nonprofits. So it tends to be a little more difficult to get that. But if you get into connection with like a, a university to do that research, it, that works a little better. <laughs> um, esports, that is huge right now. Uh, it has grown insanely over the last couple years. Um, it is predicted that by 2022, and two years ago they had predicted it at 2024, that it would be making more money than the NFL, which, I mean, you think about it, I mean, besides this year, COVID was a little crazy. Everybody lost money, but, uh, that's insane. That's two years from now. And esports is going to be bigger than football, American football. <laughs> um, so to get into esports, you can, if you don't want to develop a game, but maybe you want to record games, you can go into TV production. Um, you can be a professional gamer, which is like becoming a professional football player. You probably don't want to make that your first target, but if you happen to be like super, super good at like Smite or uh, Clash of Clans or something like that, you know, try out. Doesn't hurt. <laughs> um, there's a lot of local esports and there's a lot of national esports. Uh, there aren't any stadiums currently here in Tennessee. I do know that there's one, I believe it's owned by Blizzard in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm from Ohio. That's why I know a lot about Ohio. <laughs> um, you can get into careers for um, event management. You know, somebody has to create these huge stadiums and manage everything to make sure everything goes accordingly and people show up on time. Um, so it's insane. There's new leagues being formed every, every year, probably every month. Um, and a lot of them rise up to become pros and it's it's pretty crazy they I don't know it it blows my mind <laughs> um independent that's uh what I am I'm an independent game developer I'm my own boss and I typically get to make the games I want um some independent developers do work as contract uh like they'll contract through companies that need to make a marketing game like a Rick and Morty for Adult Swim or something like that um, but you can typically make the games you want. You can run on your schedule, um, but you have to be able to, like, you have to be your own boss, meaning you need to manage yourself well. You, you can't take 10 years to make a game. That's just crazy. People want new games all the time. You know, it's like a movie. You can't, you can't keep a movie in a theater for longer than a few months, and you can't expect a game to la have a lifespan of longer than about five years. People get bored. They want something new. So uh, you can learn at your own pace with your team. You can choose your own team. Um, some of the downfalls of being an independent developer is there is a lot of struggle. Um, getting known, learning how to network, and you really, really need to understand how business works because you're not just making a game, you're making yourself a business. So 
you either hire a tax person or learn how to do taxes. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, I know I spent the first several years being broke and you probably will too as, as an independent developer. Um, a lot of times it's just very difficult, but the reward is great and I love what I do. I get to help people like you and talk to people like you. So I don't know. I think it's pretty exciting. Then any questions? What do we got? What is the current state of game journalists in relation to social media entertainers in the game industry? Um, the current state, well, most of the time journalists, if you're talking about printed, uh, I think the only printed video game media outlet is Game Informer, and that's just part of uh, GameStop's promotional program. Um, I think there's still a couple printed in the UK and Europe, but as far as printed goes, I wouldn't go that route. I would do a blog um, or a, a video blog, you know, like a uh, like PewDiePie or Ninja or something like that, and you just gain fans. You know, have your friends follow you. Go to a college and cover an eSport event or something like that. Um, as far as the state goes, it's always growing. You need press. Game developers need press, and the consumers need to know what's going on in, in the video game world. So there's always a need. It's just figuring out how do you get that need to the people that need it. <laughs> um, the Internet is probably going to be your best bet, either through a blog. There are lots of um, existing forums where you can write um, posts and review games for money. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't think of any, but they, they are out there. It's probably where you learn about your video games as it is. Okay, so I'll go on to the next one. Are there any other questions that I missed? No. Excellent. <laughs> so, marketing. <laughs> So these, uh, this industry is typically independent game developers are going to make games. And then uh, there are some AAA. Um, THQ back in the day, they made games for Disney and Nickelodeon. Uh, I got to work on SpongeBob SquarePants games. That was interesting. <laughs> but, uh, the... Uh, the they're typically, you make games for a brand or a product. Um, you, there are also an area where for marketing, like Lowe's, for instance, they started doing virtual reality. So you can design your, your home and appliances using their virtual reality headsets in their stores. Um, I don't know if they have them set up right now just because of COVID, but, uh, they were set up a couple years ago. Um, there was one in Dublin, Ohio, a Lowe's store that had it, and it was produced by a uh, company in Cincinnati. Let's see, did you mention something earlier about Blizzard? Do you work with them? <laughs> no, I don't work with Blizzard. Um, a couple of my old classmates work at Blizzard. Um, when I was a kid, that was my dream job. <laughs> I wanted to make the next World of Warcraft, or I wanted to make the next Warcraft, and then they turned Warcraft into a uh, an RPG, so... Uh, I no longer wanted that dream. <laughs> Not that World of Warcraft is a bad game. It's fantastic. But I, I really miss my RTS. <laughs> Let's see. Did you mention something earlier about Blizzard? How do you create consistent cash flow for your company? Keep developing new games. Um, so create consistent cash flow. Typically, with if you're starting up on your own, you either get money from your friends, your family, yourself, your savings. Uh, you can take out credit or loans. Um, if you have experience or a portfolio and a team with a good portfolio of experience, you can look at investors, which is still pretty new to the industry. That's something I'm working with right now. Um, let's see. The, uh, another way is you can, uh, most independent developers actually have part-time jobs or full-time jobs and they work on their game part-time. Um, some teams have members that work full time and then they split the money while they all work on the game. It's just a matter of how, what's best for you. Do you have a family? Can you afford to have a full time job and then another full time job? Um, if you're a student, you have plenty of time. Um, 
yeah, there, there's lots of different ways. It's just a matter of what's going to work for you and what's available to you, depending on what kind of experience you have. Um, does that answer? Let's see what we got. Another one. Yeah. I will talk about that later. Oh. Do you often attend game developer conference? If so, what do you get out of it? Um, I actually, sadly, have never been to the game developer conference. Um, some of my colleagues have. Uh, one of my friends, Jared Huntley, he actually gave a presentation there last year. Um, uh, what you get out of it is mostly your networking, you're meeting new people, possibly finding a job. The game developer conference is for the developers. Um, there are other expos and I will go over those in a couple of slides. So I'm going to move to the next slide. Where am I at? All right. Let's see. How do you become a game developer <laughs> designer? So the biggest thing, and this is my opinion, but I'm going to go with it's probably really close to a fact. College is extremely important. It's not to say that you have to finish college, but going to college and starting. I had um, a friend, a uh, college mate of mine. We went to school together. He left a, like one semester before we graduated to go work for Bethesda. And uh, he's doing very well for himself and didn't need to finish his degree. But what he got out of going to college was the connections in order to get a job with Bethesda. Having that portfolio built, learning about the tools and different tools you might not even know about. Um, student programs, like there's IGDA. Well, there's a student version of that called SID, IGDA. And um, most large cities have a chapter. I know Tennessee doesn't, and I'm working on that. Um, I really, really want Tennessee's game development industry to grow, especially since I now live here. So working on that. Um, there are student programs. Um, and practice, practice, practice. What skill are you working on? Um, do you want to make characters? Most people love, you know, the artists, they love to design characters. So start drawing characters and draw them while keeping in mind that this is for a video game, not a, not a comic and not an animation. And then maybe expand your skills. Um, also apply for jobs and apply for the jobs you want. Um, hold on and I'll go into more detail. So college, it is definitely a must. Um, see, I have notes. 96% um, of people in the game industry have at least some college. They don't have, a, um, and then 82% have at least a college degree. So when you're looking at that and you have your employer looking at you that haven't, hasn't gone to college and you have the same skill set as someone who has gone to college, they're likely going to choose the person who went to college. That being said, college is very, 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 very expensive. It's not like the sixties when you could afford to go to college on a part-time job salary. So strategize, you know, start at a community college, get those credits, make sure those credits will transfer to the school you want to go and then finish your last two years. Maybe get your, start your degree there, you know, get the prerequisites classes out of the way and then um, do all the classes that are necessary at the school you want to go to, like DigiPen or, um, I don't know. <laughs> most, most schools these days do have some kind of game development degree. You're going to also want to know, do you want to go into programming? Do you want to go into engineering? Are you going to be an artist? Not all colleges offer the same thing. Some colleges only offer computer programming for game design. Some colleges only offer art <laughs> for college for game design. So where do you want to start? So you, you got to look into the school and what classes they're offering too. It's very, very important. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you often attend your oh, there we go. Do you think it's still possible to get a position at large companies without having coded as your primary skill? Do companies look for people with a very creative process? Um, so let's see. Companies, they, they look for somebody with a portfolio. And let's see, do you remember the game Plants vs. Zombies? Very cartoony, um, not very realistic. It could have probably been on like an episode of uh, on Cartoon Network or something like that versus working for Blizzard on, say, Diablo or World of Warcraft. And those are two very different art styles. What art style are you and what art style do you want to market to? So um, 
when you are applying to a job, make sure that you make your resume what they want to see. It's not about how good you are, because you know you're good. You know what your levels are and how good you can be for art, or coding, or programming, or whatever. Make sure your portfolio looks like what you think they want to see. <laughs> Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I'm hoping it made sense. Um, big companies do hire. Uh, back before 2008, during the recession, companies would fly you out and move you. After that, they kind of quit doing that. Uh, the recession kind of killed that. So look for places in your area for starter positions. Um, maybe even, you know, while you're in college, maybe a company needs a quality assurance tester. Um, work with your school to try and get uh, an intern program going for it or through that company. Call the company. Send them an email. Don't call them. Don't call them. They hate that. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Send them an email. Somebody will eventually respond to you. <laughs> um, let's see. The possible be overqualified for a position. Would companies turn you away? Um, I don't think so. Uh, it's not like you're going to work at McDonald's and you have a master's degree. <laughs> so game development's very, very different in that you can't necessarily be overqualified, but typically AAA studios are looking for a very specific job, whereas indie studios want something who want somebody who can do wear a lot of hats. So like for AAA, say you're going to go work for Ubisoft on their next Assassin's Creed title or whatever, um, and they need a lighter. That's all you're going to do is you're just going to sit and place lights in a level. But say you're going to go work for uh, the meat, the, I think it's called Meat Squad or Super Meat Squad. They made Super Meat Boy several years ago. Um, they will likely want you to understand a little bit of social media, maybe some JavaScript information. I think they used Flash, although Flash isn't used anymore. But, um, you know, they're going to want you to know a little bit of everything. So it doesn't hurt to know a lot, but make sure your portfolio is focused. It just depends on what that studio and where you're applying, what they're looking for. Um, but things to have. Let's see. I keep rolling out my notes. <laughs> So things to have, you definitely want a website. Um, if you can't afford to like pay for a domain and a website, they have lots of free websites like Blogger and uh, I think Google offers free websites. WordPress offers we free websites. I mean, there's lots of stuff. YouTube and Vimeo to display your demo reels, although people really don't use demo reels anymore. I just use that term because that's what I was <laughs> taught. But you're going to want videos and demonstrations of the work you've done. Like, say you're an animator, you're going to want to show them your stuff animated. So you're going to need a reel of some sort. And LinkedIn is a lot more important than people seem to think it is. Most of my networking is done on LinkedIn. I have lots of, lots of industry people that I've networked with. And it's all been done through LinkedIn, especially in, like, in today's day with COVID happening, there aren't any events going on, so you can't network in person. So networking online is a excellent skill to have, and it's definitely very valuable. You get to meet people, maybe they'll tell you about some show you never even knew about, and it's right in your hometown. Um, there's lots of different places. So say you're going to do for programming, you'll want to share your work on GitHub, and for music, you can use Bandcamp and Behance and DeviantArt are for the artists, but typically you're definitely going to want a website. Like I used to use De uh, DeviantArt and Behance for my artwork, but I don't even do that anymore. I just have my website, my portfolio. Um, but if you're looking to get noticed, that's where you go when you're starting your career for sure. Let's see. Let's see. I guess what I meant was that I have great ideas for character story development or ways that certain parts of the game can be improved because I think outside the box being not a superior coder. So uh, that's a game, I guess the term could be called game designer. Um, if you want to be a game designer and you've never worked or have any experience, you're going to have to find a team and do it on your own. That is a high, like a C-level type of job, and you're never going to get hired right away as a designer. People that have worked 20 years in the industry and that's their career goal still don't have that goal. Um, it's a tough job to get, 
and it pays very well. <laughs> um, now, on the independent side level, say you have a game and you can design your document, get everything ready, and get a team ready. Maybe work with some people to work together and find some friends online that are, you know, looking to build their portfolio up and they'll work with you just for that kind of experience. Um, I guess it's just a matter of like your skill level, but if it's your first job in the game industry, I would not expect that anybody would hire you right out as a game designer. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I mean, if you see a game and you want to improve on it, I, a lot of people do that, but they rake their own like ROMs and their own version of the video game. Like, there's a lot of different versions of the Pokemon Red and Blue from back in the day on the Game Boy. Uh, I mean, I guess that's the best advice I could give. <laughs> Let's see. Move on to the next one. So networking, 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 networking. Uh, who you know does matter. Uh, your portfolio matters, and who you know matters. Networking, like. It's a lot better to be recommended by somebody you know than to be coming in from nowhere. Like they don't know who you are. So networking is very good. You can join the IGBA. There's lots of chapters. Um, there are lo lots of local t gaming tech groups. Um, here in Tennessee, you've got the Knox Devs, which is for computer technology. Um, you've got the Memphis Game Devs, the Knox Game Design for Knoxville. Oh, I put Memphis Game Devs twice. <laughs> and then the Nashville Game Developers. Those are the ones I've found in here in Tennessee. Um, there's two studios here in Tennessee that I'm aware of. And then mine, so I guess there's three. And then um, you can join online forums. Like, uh, I mean, you can Google search a key phrase here and end it with forums. And then you'll find tons of them, like music forums, video game forums. Go to the Reddit. Um, let's see, uh, reaching out to local developers, never, ever, ever call developers. I mean, if I don't recognize a number, I don't even pick up my phone. So don't call them, email them. It's a lot easier for people to go through their emails and respond than it is to have a phone conversation. Because typically, especially during the middle of the workday, they're working. <laughs> um, LinkedIn, again, very important. Update your LinkedIn profile, focus it, um, make sure you have your job history. Even if you don't have any history, start putting your skills up there. Um, and then examples of your skills. Uh, I think LinkedIn has a section where you can uh, display some projects that you worked on. So if you're in high school or college, you can display your project and show it off. Um, join meetup.com and join the groups that are there. Most of the time it's free. Uh, it just depends on the groups. And then, of course, attend expos when it's not COVID. But even so, there have been a lot of online expos, and most of them were paid for. But this year, uh, the Penny Arcade Expo, the PAX, they had an online expo a couple weeks ago, and it was done really, really well. I Definitely my favorite by far so far as an online presence. Um, but that's where you meet the developers. You can meet indie developers. You meet AAA developers. You can talk to them, act to them, yeah, take selfies if you're fanboying <laughs> uh, <laughs> or fangirling. <laughs> I know uh, one year I went to, was it Penny Arc? I don't know. I don't know if you guys know who the angry video game nerd is. And I have never fangirled before. And I ran into the video game nerd at a bar and like fangirled. It was, it was very embarrassing afterwards, but I got a signature and he didn't seem very happy to see. <laughs> you know, whatever. So attend events, attend local meetups, meet people. Networking is very, very important. And you know, you're going to say, oh, I'm not on social media. I don't want to be on social media. Well, <laughs> that's where people meet. <laughs> uh, Student programs. Student programs are important and they're available to students. Um, do I have another question there? Great info you're giving. Let's see. If you join a big AAA company, will you be locked in for just one job? Uh, that depends on your employee contract. Um, if they're hiring you for just one project and they're hiring you at the beginning, it's typically going to be a two year two, two, three year contract. 
if they like you or they need you, they'll keep you on for another contract. Um, I'm not too sure. I know most of the time the beginner jobs are contract jobs in AAA. Job security is as secure as the contract is. Um, so, <laughs> you know, if it's only a nine month job and you're not sure if you're going to be able to find a job after that and they want you to move to San Diego and you're living in Maine, <laughs> you might want to rethink that opportunity or um, actually a lot of uh, studios are switching to um, remote work. So you may want to proposition that if they like you, they called you back, you know, say, hey, you know, since this is a nine month contract, can we work that remote and go from there? Or maybe work the first couple of months, you know, see how you fit in. A lot of times companies, when they hire someone brand new, they want you to test you out to make sure that not just your skills are good, but that you fit well with the team and you're not going to cause trouble. <laughs> so, because, I mean, really, this is going to be your second family. <laughs> you know, where you work is your second family. <laughs> You heard the the term work wife and work husband. It's very, very accurate. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, that was the last question. So student programs. Um, if you're in high school, a lot of high schools are still kind of catching up. Um, some high schools have game development programs. It just depends where you are. A lot of them in this, uh, where I am and in Ohio, don't currently have game dev programs or even game creation programs. But if you are in high school and your high school doesn't have one, there's no find your favorite teacher and ask them to help you create one. You can create a group. I'm sure there's other students interested in making video games. Um, if you're in college, um, most colleges, especially the bigger ones, are part of Major League Hacking and they throw on yearly hackathons. I think there's one being placed at least every month and um, you can travel with your team to go to other schools hackathons or you can stay local. I know um, University of Tennessee does MLH. I did not attend this year's just because of COVID and I don't think, I'm not even sure if they did it this year. But I know they did it last year. I think it was in September and it went really well. Um, I came from Youngstown, Ohio and those pictures up there in the right corner. Uh, that's my friend Joe Dunko. <laughs> He's no longer a student, but he was a student at YSU leading their hackathons and that was him. Um, find game jams um, on itch.io. Itch.io, you can find uh, listings of game jams. There's one being held probably every week, if not two. Um, if you don't know what a game jam is and you do know what a hackathon is, it's basically the same thing except you're only making video games. And there's various game and tech clubs. Um, there's esports clubs at schools, and some schools are offering scholarships for esports now. So, and if your school's not, talk to an administrator about it. Um, and, you know, typically what they're interested in is, is it going to help them make money? So present it that way. <laughs> um, um, and then you have your local entrepreneur centers and maker spaces. Um, here in Tennessee, we have, I have them written here, uh, the Nashville Entrepreneur Center, Launch Tennessee, Knoxville Entrepreneur Center, the CoLab in Chattanooga, which is what this event is part of for their startup week. Um, and most major metropolitan areas have some kind of makerspace or entrepreneur center, and they can help you. They'll help you with finding money or job getting started. Up. The things you don't know, they definitely know, so they're a good resource to have. All right, we'll go on to the next one. Where's my mouse? There it is. So practicing, make video games. <laughs> you don't know how to make video games? There are lots of tutorials out there to help you make video games. Uh, Lynda.com has been around since I was in college. Um, it was very new back then, very, very expensive. And now it's free through most library systems. Um, a lot of schools, like colleges, they have uh, they might have it through the library system. You'd have to check with your library. I know the state of Ohio, most of their library systems has it, and I think Tennessee's does, but I'm not sure. I'm still signed in through my Ohio library card. <laughs> so, um, Unity and Unreal for the Unreal Engine and then 
the Unity engine, um, they both have tutorials. They want you to learn how to use their tools so that you will develop games on their systems, their uh, software development kits. So by all means, go to them. If they have customer service and help centers, they have forums on their websites, they want you to learn. If you're better with C-sharp, I'd go with Unity. If you're better with uh, C++, I'd go with Unreal. Um, if you want to do... Actually, both of them are really good for any kind of console system. They both export to all the consoles, I believe. Yeah. And um, Constex 3 uh, is made by a company called Sierra. Um, I just mentioned them because they're a WYSIWYG editor, which stands for what you see is what you get. Um, and basically, you don't have to program anything. You put something on the stage, and then you click a drop-down menu and tell it what to do. Um, a lot of professionals use it to create demos to kind of test the market and see if their game's going to run right. But uh, they have tutorials from beginner to advanced on their website as well. Uh, if you don't know how to program, but you want to make a game, a WYSIWYG editor is the way to go. You don't need to know how to program to make a game. Uh, you've got, oh, what's the other one? There's another one. RPG Maker, <laughs> um, and then, oh gosh, I'm forgetting the other one. There's, you know, just Google search game engine, and there's tons of them. You can have reviews on them, but the two main game engines that are used professionally for consoles that you would play at home as a consumer are going to be Unity and Unreal. Um, typically, AAA studios and developers, they either use those or they already have their own, um, development kit that they created in-house. Um, let's see. Your first game will be awful. Absolutely awful. And that's okay. <laughs> Everybody's first game was awful. Mine was too. I caught fruit in a basket on a flip phone <laughs> using JavaScript. That was interesting. An old flip phone. Do you remember the flip phones? Are some of you even old enough to have a flip phone? What do we got? Oh, Is it possible to qualify? I guess we're having a good idea. Keep scrolling, so I'm not clicking. If you join up, oh, it's the same questions. All right, so applying for jobs. This will test your patience. Um, never lose your focus. Uh, you're you're gonna be applying. It's gonna take at least six months most likely. So prepare for it. Make sure you're ready for that. It, it's going to attack your confidence. Just remember that you know you're good. You know you're good at what you do, and it's just a matter of putting the piece together to find the studio that's right for you. Um, there are job listings on Gama Sutra, Unity, Indeed, Unreal, LinkedIn, Dice, Jobs.com, job sites. They're all over. Um, the best place to start for specifically the video game entertainment industry, I would go with Gama Sutra. Um, Unity has a job section. You know, just you know how to apply for a job. Make sure you've got a resume. You know, apply for the job you want to do. Don't apply for something you don't want to do. You'll be miserable. Um, and don't be afraid to apply for jobs that list skills that you may not currently have or say they require you to know Maya but you only know 3D Studio Max or something like that. Those skills are transferable. They're both 3D programs. You can quickly adapt to the user interface. It's not that big of a deal. Um, you can expect to hear back from maybe 10%. I would expect even less than 10%. Uh, it's tough. And it's a very tough market. Everybody wants to work in the industry, but not everybody is going to get the job that's being applied to. If you know it's a job that everybody's going to apply to, it's even harder market to do. Um, and if you want to find studios, sometimes studios don't list them on job forums. They just list them on their websites. So go to gamedevmap.com, and you can see every studio in the world and where it is. So say you want to work only in San Diego. Go to gamedevmap.com, go down to California, San Diego, and see all the studios that are listed there and see if there's any jobs open. Um, 
also be prepared for your interview. Know the company. Um, like I mentioned a couple of slides ago, you've got you've got to understand that like if you only know how to code JavaScript and they need a C sharp programmer or a C plus plus programmer you need to have a portfolio that shows that you know that kind of language. Um, or if you're an artist, you need to have either a realistic art style or a cartoony art style. What, what, what do you think the company is looking for? Why do you want to work for them? And how do you think you're going to get the job and show off to be the best? Um, oh, my mouse keep moving. There we go. Let's see. And as always, identify and expand your skills. Never stop learning. There is always something you can learn that's new. The, this is an industry that will never stop changing. It is always growing. I mean, 10 years ago, we didn't even really have VR. Virtual reality was like something you saw at a museum and or learned about in Tron or something. <laughs> and now you have consoles that you can take home with you and play with the, the hand sticks and you put them on and you're in a whole nother universe. So it's a constantly changing industry, which also means you need to keep your skills up. So like, say you learned Photoshop 10 years ago, you won't know Photoshop now if you've never looked at Photoshop since then. <laughs> you just have to stay up to date, but that also means expanding your skills. So say you learned how to draw a character try expanding. Maybe you learn how to animate your character. Adobe has lots of different software and if you're using their subscription service you have access to that software. So they have like character animator, they have um, After Effects. Learn to use these things. Um, use them to your advantage. There was a studio I was working for that you know rendered character animations out in After Effects. So while that was not a skill I learned in school, that was a skill I needed to know to work there. <laughs> so. You know, don't be afraid to learn something new. Also, don't be afraid to fail. Um, make short-term goals. Don't, like, jump from I made a uh, basket-catching game to now I can make my first RPG. I did that, and I ended up curled under my desk crying for months <laughs> because I, my programming skills weren't where they needed to be, and I had all this artwork and nothing to do. Like, I couldn't do it. I didn't know Unity well enough back then to make the game I wanted to make. Now that game is set aside and I keep it as a nice little reminder to not over, not go crazy. <laughs> How do you organize other developers to help create a game you envision? Do you hire them professionally? Let's see. So. You can organize, there are lots of different places, like you can go on a forum and say, does anybody, hey, anybody want to make a game? You can also put an advertisement out on like Craigslist or, um, you know, job sites that are looking for people that aren't necessarily looking for a job that pays, that are just looking for somebody to work on a project with. Um, typically in that instance, you're going to find mostly college students. Um, or people that are just hobbyists and want something to do. Ooh, excuse me. Um, I do you hire them. You can hire them professionally. There's um, one developer that's in uh, the Knox game devs. He um, pays an artist to make his artwork so that he can uh, code his game because he's a programmer, <laughs> not an artist. So, you know, it just depends on, you know, how much money do you have to spend on do you have the ability to lead a team? <laughs> that is a skill on its own, for sure. Let's see. Majority of jobs require C++. Are there any other languages that might take over? C++ is listed because that is the language that will never die. <laughs> that language is typically it's like C and C++, because you can use, it's complicated. Ugh. Um, the, but C++ is used for the Unreal Engine, that's what it's written in, and then the Unity Engine is actually written in C Sharp, which is a lot closer related to, say, JavaScript. Um, they actually used to have JavaScript in Unity, but removed it a few years ago. 
Um, just because it says C++ on there doesn't, on the job application, doesn't mean that that's actually what they're looking for. Typically, if it's a larger studio, it's a recruiter that's filling out this application or the, you know, the, the job listing and they don't know the difference between C++ and C Sharp, so it doesn't hurt to apply and then ask that question later. <laughs> but also, you might want to look into the studio that you're hiring for if they have it listed there and, um, you know, see what engine they're using. Um, a lot of times they'll list it, um, and if you're playing their games, uh, they're usually a splash screen before you even launch the game that'll show what engine is being used. Um, Will this video be posted for replay? Yes, it will. Uh, YouTube records it, and um, as soon as this is over, it will repost it right afterwards. So, yeah. Um, and then in the link there, I'm going to update it, but I'll have a link so that you can download the slides too. So I'm, I'm sure they're somewhat difficult to read. And then if you have any questions, uh, my email is kendra at imgames.com. I'm currently working on a game. It's called Enfield's Apocalypse. I just started production on it last month. Um, I've been in the middle of moving to Tennessee this year, and I established my studio down here, and I'm looking for funding. So, you know, it's a whole lot of business process. I've been planning the marketing, and it's just crazy. <laughs> but uh, if you have any questions, I will... will try and answer them as much as possible. Um, like I said, my email is Kendra at imgames.com. And uh, Imer Studios is the name of the studio. Youngstown Game Developers is an organization organization I founded when I lived in Youngstown, Ohio. <laughs> um, I still operate the website now. Um, so thank you guys so much. Uh, until next time. <laughs>